Brexiteer fears about remoner schemes to get back into the European Union, by stealth if necessary, should face the reality that there likely won't be an EU for the UK to rejoin in the years ahead. This does not mean an organization called the EU will not exist. But it does mean the centralizing dreams of the Brussels elite will have failed to deliver the lofty goals Europhiles once had. Before we even get to the sclerotic growth rates, before we get to the dismal failures of the Eurozone which, notwithstanding new arrivals like Croatia, have led to a great deal of buyer's remorse. Before we get to the terrible rates of investment, which explains why you don't hear much about European tech companies to rival the juggernauts of America and Asia, there is the fact that countries still look out for their own interest, with a civilizational split now opening up across the block. A few years ago, you may recall, we heard a lot about the Frugal Four, Austria, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Sweden, often plus Germany, leading to the so-called Frugal Five. The four generally adopted a fiscally prudent approach during COVID, meaning they didn't want to be on the hook for other, mostly Southern European, countries financially. So much for EU solidarity. The four also sought to protect billions of euros in budget rebates. Again, so much for solidarity. Witness now the infighting over who has to deal with the EU's immigration wave, which, to be honest, is a collective failure, rather than something which can be blamed on Mediterranean border countries like Italy. Does Germany really have a leg to stand on when it points fingers at Poland over a potential visa scandal, which Poland claims is being overblown and they are dealing with? True, those with Polish visas would likely try and get into countries like France and Germany with bigger welfare states. But that is thanks to the Schengen area which allows for free movement and which Germany backs. Plus, Germany has hardly been an exemplar of tough border controls has it, that leads to the civilizational division between the conservative and re-Christianized states of the EU's east, like Hungary and Poland, against the liberal and post-Christian countries of the EU's west. Even the wealth divisions between East and West and North and South in the EU pale into insignificance compared to this divide, which Hungary and Poland see as the true reason for so-called rule of law disputes in the EU, something Budapest and Warsaw see as the weaponization of EU funds. This is the reality of the EU. Solidarity when it suits, and nation interest when it doesn't. Despite the occasional griping, wealthier areas of genuine countries, like the UK or the US, accept they must subsidize poorer areas, or at least are obliged to help raise living standards in those areas. Not so in the EU, which talks the language of unity and harmony, but where wealthier countries fall back on narrow self-interest when reality bites, or election time nears. Note also how the Eurozone has largely been a vehicle for Germany's manufacturing interests, albeit that train is starting to derail now.
Unlike the Eurozone states of Greece and Italy, most of the nationalist countries in the East never joined the Euro, making it infinitely easier for them to leave the bloc if they choose to. Don't believe all this guff about their dependency on EU funds either. The likes of Hungary and Poland, and many of their neighbors, are set to be net contributors to the bloc in the years ahead, destroying the financial leverage Brussels thinks it has over them. There is perhaps a debate to be had about whether Brexit has been botched. If true, this is thanks to the Conservatives, failing as they have to make the most of leaving, and opening up the possibility of an incoming Labour, or Lib Lab, government realigning the UK with the EU. But Tory failure does not change the fact the EU itself is failing as well, unable to stand up for its core mission, which in turn make Remainer dreams of rejoining or realigning seem increasingly fanciful. Despite the goals of the treaties of Maastricht and Lisbon, the EU is not a genuine union, based on shared values, identity, financial burdens, and responsibility. With little trust and appetite for sharing much beyond a flag which no one salutes and a parliament which has next to no power, the EU is a union in name only which even Remainers should be wary of rejoining. Brexit may well have been botched. But that says more about the failures of the British political establishment, not least the Conservative Party, than it does about the successes of an EU now on the verge of tearing itself apart.